quite an interesting discussion today. We want to discuss CVP analysis and the relevant costing. CVP analysis, relevant costing, and perhaps limiting factor analysis. So it, it is going to be quite a lengthy discussion. CVP analysis, relevant costing through to, so it's CVP analysis, relevant costing, limiting factor analysis. So it's quite a lot. And then before we dismiss, I'm going to send another video, which is on standard costing and variance analysis. This is the video that you play in conjunction with this one. The beauty, the reason for doing this is we want to finish our syllabus end of July. We don't want to have anything to play, to come in, in between. We want to finish our syllabus latest first week of August, so that we have the whole month of August doing revision and also you are equipped to uh, to do the assignments. That's the understanding. So when I say play the a particular video, it's actually part of our learning because these are my videos. So when I say play this video, I know everything in there is what we were going to cover. And having a video ready, save, uh, it, it helps us to save vital and substantial amount of time. You get that. So you, you so, 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 that's so important. So allow me to share my screen. <laughs> allow me to share my screen here. As I have said, the action-packed discussion for today, it comprises of CVP analysis, CVP analysis, CVP analysis, analysis it comprises of a relevant costing relevant costing also comprises of limiting factor analysis you know concerning limiting factors uh, we we there are various ways we we address the problem of limiting factors chiefly among them is the chiefly among them is the issue of linear programming we are not going to delve into linear programming today but on another date but for now we are want to just to focus on the use of marginal costing principles to find better way to utilize a resource which is in short supply now cvp analysis is the first analysis some call it cost volume profit analysis that's what it means, cost, volume, profit analysis. So it's a planning and control tool. This one is actually a planning and control tool. It's a planning and control tool. Control tool used to forecast, forecast level of sales, level of sales, Sales and sales, comma, a profit, profit and costs, costs at different output levels, at different and output levels. That's CVP analysis. It's a planning and control tool, which as a manager you can use. To determine the level of costs uh, of level of sales costs etc at different output levels put in another term some may, may call it break-even analysis but this is a this is part of it it's not it's not necessarily it some call it break-even analysis break-even analysis so what do you understand by the term break-even if you may ask what does the term break even mean? You know, uh, break even means output. You know, you are said to have broken even when you are just making enough to cover costs. In other words, you are not even earning profit, neither are you incurring losses. You are just earning enough to cover costs. And the output level, which 
at the output level at which total sales equals total costs is called break even point so break even point you can you can have it like break even point the output at which total sales output at which total sales equals total cost break even point the output level at which total sales is equal to total costs we call this break even point so at which at, at this point you are neither making profit nor are you incurring losses so we we can actually illustrate break even point graphically you know it's possible for for us to illustrate graphically the break even analysis break even point Oh, sorry, may you please mute whenever you have joined, try to mute so that you minimize background noises. So if 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 I have my cost revenue caps, my cost caps like this, allow me to to actually open the graphs so that you can see what I'm talking about. You can see what I'm talking about. Let me open it. All right. It's opening. Just want to show you the graphical interpretation of break even point because in your exam, you'll be asked to you'll be asked to, you know, you, you, your exam now that is computer-based, you may not be asked to draw, actually, but you may be given a drawn diagram and you are asked to mark certain points there. So the points that you may be asked to mark are the points I want to show you, some of them. So if, if you have a diagram like this, You know, I'm trying to zoom it, and in zooming it, it's disappearing. What's what's wrong with this? Okay. Let me fish another diagram, just in case this one is acting up, and it's not it's not actually saving what we want, because when 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 you have a situation where where the, the diagram is not opening, it's not being, it's not possible to zoom it. Then you have a problem. All right. All right, okay, this one, I can zoom it. So you can see here, these are the curves. Now notice the curves. There's, there's what is called the fixed cost line. The fixed cost line doesn't start at zero because fixed costs are incurred even if output is at zero. So important. You incur fixed costs even when your output is at zero. So because of that, fixed costs doesn't start at zero. Another thing is total cost is the sum of total cost is the sum of fixed costs and variable costs. So if we know that fixed costs do not start from zero, it equally means total costs don't start from zero because total costs include fixed costs. But however, total revenue line starts from zero because you only make revenue when you sell. So the point where, the point where total revenue here and the total costs intersect, the output level is called break-even point. This dotted line here, is the break-even point. So you can actually have break-even point in units like this. Or you can have also break-even point in dollars, which is on the horizontal axis. So containing break-even point, there is break-even point in units, and there is also break-even point in dollars. Let me show you. This one is break-even point in units. 
This one is break even point in dollars. Are you getting that? That's break even point in units, break even point in dollars. Just wanted to show you that. Mm. Now, continuing. Um, now that you know that this is break even point in units and the other one is break even point in dollars, we can now we can now escalate it and and talk about wh what are implications of breaking even. The implications is like this: when you have broken even, if you increase output beyond break even point, like if you if your output is beyond break even point, you notice that your total revenue is greater than total cost. So the area shaded in green then represents profit that you have earned. So when you when your output exceeds break even point, you are now selling more than your costs. Your revenue is now more than your costs, so you are now making a profit. But for output levels below the break even point, like these ones, if your output level is below the break even point, your revenue here is lower than your costs, so you are incurring losses. So it is now logical for a manager to aim to break even to 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 get to the break even point early you should get to the break even point early the reason being as soon as you have attained your break even point you are now able to make profit we say you are now safe as soon as you have achieved your break even point any output level beyond that you are now in your surfeit net we call that margin of surfeit you are now in your surface net, meaning any output beyond break-even point is called profit zone. So if you had budgeted to sell this output and your break-even point is at this, it means the difference between maximum budgeted quantity and break-even quantity, the difference between the two is called the margin of safety. That is called the margin of safety because it, it then means you are now making a profit. You are now safe. You can actually have margin of safety even in dollars. Your total budgeted sales, which is the vertical axis here, less the break-even sales here. The difference here is called margin of safety. So this is the terminology used. So you can see that break-even point can be obtained graphically like that. You can equally obtain break-even point uh, uh, mathematically. So, so let us see if here break-even point, break-even, break-even analysis, analysis can be undertaken, can be undertaken product a single product or multi multiple products you know you can sell one product or you can sell multi products it's not possible for you just to sell a single product nowadays normally you sell even if you have a boutique you do have multiple products so so what we'll be doing here is let us have a comparative table which is telling us how we compute break-even point for a single product and for multiple products. So I will have a single product and multiple products like this. So this is single product. Single product product break even analysis and here it's multi product multi product break even analysis so the single product and there is multi product multiple products we just pre we just present it as multi product uh, let me tabulate my work so that it will look nice you know in, in performance management there's an element of being neat we take neatness seriously we actually take neatness seriously in performance management. So there you go. Single product and multi-product. So let us see. 
Let us say you are calculating break-even point in units. Break-even point, break-even point in units. Suppose you are asked to calculate break-even point in units. For a single product, you simply say total fixed costs, total fixed costs, total uh, total fixed costs fixed costs divided by contribution per unit by total fixed costs of a contribution per unit this is how you calculate break even point in units to find the number of units you need to break even <laughs> For multiple products, you say total fixed costs, total fixed costs, total fixed costs FC divided by weighted contribution per unit. Weighted, you say divided by weighted contribution per unit. Are you not seeing that for a single product it's just contribution per unit for multiple products it's actually weighted contribution per unit <laughs> meaning this time you have to calculate weighted contribution because you are not selling a single product so how do we calculate weighted contribution per unit weighted contribution per unit if you want to know how it is calculated weighted contribution weighted contribution per unit this is how it is calculated remember for all intents and purposes contribution means selling price minus variable costs you know that just in case you have forgotten contribution equals selling price selling price minus variable cost that's how you calculate contribution, selling price per unit minus variable costs. But when you are calculating weighted contribution, it goes like this. Let's say you have got two products, three products actually. Let's say here are your products. Products. You do have product X, Y, and Z. And now, oh, let me just put two because what we do for two we do for three as well and now we do have contribution per unit contribution per unit contribution per unit for this one is 12 for this one is 12 is 18 and then you have got sales mix ratio sales mix ratio it is important for you to understand that the sales mix ratio will be given either as budgeted sales figures or something else suppose the sales mix ratio in this case is three as two two let's say the sales mix ratio is three as to two now if you are given this information and you are asked to calculate weighted contribution weighted contribution you need you then say you find the total ratio and the total ratio is five so it will be three over five uh, actually you open a bracket and say equals three over five multiply by 12 close bracket plus open bracket two over five Apply by uh, 18. That's how you calculate weighted contribution. So you get it as saying equals 3 over 5 times 12 plus uh, 2 over 5 times 18. That's how you calculate it. So it's 14. 4. So 14,4 is the weighted contribution per unit. This is what you put here when you're calculating break-even point 
for multiple products. If there were three products, you would still follow suit. You extend your ratio to accommodate three products and still have your weighted contribution per unit. Are you getting that? So, so. Oh, okay, perfect. Someone is getting a screenshot. So there you go. So with this, with this, for example, if you want, then I want, I want to say something very important here. If you are selling a single product, like we are selling chicken, contribution, if, if the, I mean, break even point, if it's 600, it means you need to sell 600 chickens. You need to sell 600 chickens because it's a single product. But what if you are selling multiple products and the answer you get here is 700? Remember, you're selling product X and product Y and you get the answer there is 700. Now, the question is, it's 700 of which product? You have to ask yourself that question. You calculate it for multi-products, multi you get the answer here saying total fixed cost over weighted contribution, meaning over 14,4, for example. You get the answer is 700. Does it mean 700 is for product X or for product Y? Because these are multiple products, you know, you then have to say this, NB. For, multi, for multiple products, for multi-products, the break even point the the break even point BEP in units is then apportioned then apportioned to products is then apportioned to products using using budgeted sales mix ratios budgeted sales Mix, mix ratios so you'll be given the sales mix ratios if if the sales mix ratios are not given you can deduce them from the budget information if you are told that they intend to to sell 22,000 of x and 18,000 of y it means budget is 22 it means the mix ratio is 22,000 as to 18,000 Mix ratios can be deduced from budgeted sales volumes. That's, that's, that's another point. Mix ratio can be deduced from the budgeted, budgeted sales volumes. You can actually deduce mix ratios from the budgeted sales volumes. Possible that way. If you are not if, if they are not exclusively given so this is the first ratio to calculate it is break even point in units now what 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 is another figure that we have to calculate here it's break even point number two break even point meaning BEP in dollars in do you can actually calculate BEP in units or dollars with when they give it a sales revenue or break even sales revenue. If the question says break even sales revenue, they don't want the answer in units, rather, they want the answer in dollars. It's simple. All you do for, for a single, if you don't mind, if I can. If I can freeze the paints here. Um, if I can freeze the paints like this. All right. Okay. All right. I'm sure it works this way. Break even point in sales volumes. How do you calculate break even point in sales volume? It's easy. All you have to do is you say total fixed costs divided by contribution to sales ratio. Contribution to sales ratio. So it's total fixed costs divided by contribution to sales ratio. Simple as that. 
for multi products, it is still the same. You say total fixed costs divided by, you just say weighted contribution to sales ratio. So it's important for you to understand this that contribution to sales ratio equals contribution over sales. If you say C slash S ratio, we are simply saying equals contribution contribution divided by sales that's what we are what that's that's what we are talking about by c slash s but what do we mean by weighted contribution to sales ratio all right so when you're calculating weighted contribution to sales ratio contribution 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 to sales ratio equals here is how you calculate it you say total contribution from all products total contribution total contribution from all products all products meaning add all the contribution together assuming that every output is sold divided by total sales total sales this is how you calculate weighted contribution to sales ratio may you please mute when you've got background noises it's a matter of muting to minimize distracting your colleagues okay perfect are you getting what i'm saying so there is there is weighted contribution to sales and the just contribution to sales if we are talking of contribution to sales it's a matter of contribution over sales but when we say weighted contribution to sales we now we need to add total contribution not just contribution per unit but total assuming you have sold every product every product you have sold it what is the total contribution and then you then you then have to subtract to divide that by total sales so this is another another metric there that we can calculate in our break even in our cvp analysis no wonder why we call it cvp analysis you can see we are ana again again Ibaba, on this still on this one if i if i can undo what what i have done here mm -hmm. uh, for for a single unit for a single product the contribution i mean the break-even sales revenue it is attributable to that product but when it comes to multi-products you then have to apportion it to products using budgeted sales mix ratios so for multi for multiple products break-even point in units is then apportioned I mean, break-even point in dollars is then apportioned to the products using budgeted sales mix ratios. So this one is still very important for you to memorize. All right. And then we do have we do have sales volume to achieve a target profit. You know, as a planning con and control tool. You can use this to determine sales volume sales volume to achieve target profit sales volume to achieve a target profit you may need also to say suppose i want to make a profit of 2000 how many units am i supposed to sell that's what we refer to as volume. You want to make a profit of 20,000. How many units are you expected to sell in order to achieve that target profit? It's easy. You simply say total fixed costs. You know, we said to achieve a target profit, which we call, which we call TP. So target profit is TP. How then do you work out this? You simply say, Total fixed cost plus target profit. You you put this in brackets. 
total fixed cost plus target profit in brackets. And then you divide that by contribution per unit. Contribution per unit. Total fixed cost plus target profit, and then you divide that by contribution per unit. The answer that you get there becomes sales volume to achieve a target profit. Now, if, if, if you wanted to find for multi-product, the formula is again the same. The formula is again the same. It will be like, uh, it will be like if I copy this formula here, and I paste it. All I have to do is to put the word weighted contribution per unit. I then have to weigh to calculate weighted contribution per unit. Instead, so how do I calculate weighted contribution per unit? The same way I have calculated weighted contribution per unit uh, above. So you get that? Mm. Right, so there you go. Um, okay. All right. So that's what you do when you're calculating sales volume to achieve a target profit. Now, you, you, this, the answer that comes out from this working is in units because you are working sales volume, meaning in units, to achieve a target profit. But you can equally work sales revenue to achieve a target profit and actually if sales revenue necessary to achieve sales revenue by revenue we mean dollars necessary to achieve a target profit necessary to achieve a target profit you now want how much should you sell in revenue to achieve a target profit so again you simply say total fixed cost plus target profit then you say divided by instead you then say divided by contribution to sales ratio then say divided by contribution to sales ratio. Now, if you, if you are selling multiple products and you still want to find the same ratio, you say total cost plus target profit divided by, for multiple products, you then simply say weighted contribution to sales ratio. Weighted contribution to sales ratio. And now you understand how we calculate weighted contribution to sales ratio? I simply say you say total contribution from all products divided by total sales. That's how we calculate weighted contribution to sales ratio. You get that? Simple as that. So that's that's break that's break even analysis or CVP analysis. Perhaps you were thinking that there's quite a lot of things involved. No, it's it's just as simple as this. Now um, we we are we are we are we are done with the with the compilation of the the the, the assessment of this in a tabular fashion. Now let us say some points to note in this particular discussion. There are certain points for us to note, like. What do, what do we mean by margin of safety? MOS, margin of safety. So you notice, as I have told you, I said once you have attained your break even point, any output level in, in, in beyond break even point here, you are now in, we are now in your surfeit net. In other words, we are now earning a profit. So we say it's margin of surfeit. The difference between maximum, maximum output and break even output. That is called MOS, margin of surfeit. So margin of surfeit in brackets, MOS, it, it, it is, you can, you can actually get it in units. You simply say, 
budgeted output minus break even output budgeted output output less break even point in units margin of safety you can you can actually have margin of safety in units i mean as a percentage so if the examiner says mos percentage it's simply mos mos in units divided by budgeted output multiplied by 100 percent budgeted output and then you multiply this whole thing by 100 percent that's how you calculate mos percentage so that's that's another issue here you can actually have mos in dollars in this time when mos is in dollars suppose you now need mos in dollars here not in units understand the question is saying what instead of saying budgeted output you now say budgeted revenue budgeted sales revenue even point in dollars of these figures in dollars this time so even if you had calculated mos in dollars you still have to call you may you may be asked to calculate mos percentage so mos percentage this time becomes mos in dollars divided by budgeted sales budgeted revenue Revenue multiplied by 100 percent because it's now in dollars. That's break even point for a single product and for a multiple product. So you you may ask a logical question and say, say, it appears the the chart you are showing us is a break even chart for a single product. Are you telling us that there is no break even chart for multiple products? That would be a logical question, really. To say, say, are you telling us that if, if I'm asked to mark points for a single product from what you have told us, I can now follow through. I can mark the break-even point. I can mark a lot of other stuff. But can you tell me that don't we have break-even chart for multi-products? Multi now, here is the break-even chart. Uh, here are the steps involved in, in, in having break-even chart for multi -pro multiple products. Break-even chart for multiple products. You can equally have a chart for multiple products. It's not like it has to be a single product only to have a chart. You can have a break-even chart for multiple products. Here is how you come up with the chart. Here is how you come up with the chart. So steps involved. Involved. Steps involved. You know, these steps are obtained from the assumptions that we are we use when you are calculating break-even point for multiple products. First, uh, you know, you know, actually, before I say steps involved, let me say assumptions involved. Assumptions involved. These are the assumptions involved. Number one, products are to be sold in their constant sales mix ratios. Products are to be sold there in their budgeted sales mix ratios. Budgeted, budgeted sales mix ratio, which is assumed to be constant. Most, this is the most, it, it's actually a single most important assumption when you're calculating a multi-product break-even chart. And I told you that if if you are given budget, if you are not given the mixed ratios, but you are given a budgeted budgeted figures, you can as well 
you can as well um, if you are given if you are not given mixed ratios but you are just given budgeted figures you can as well deduce the mixed ratio from the budgeted figures for example suppose you are told that the firm is budgeted to sell 22,000 of X and 80, 20,000 of Y. It means the mix ratio is 22,000 S to 20. <laughs> right, steps involved. These are the steps involved when you are computing multi-product, when I want to come up with a multi-product break-even chart. Steps involved. Simple steps that, we, that are involved here. Nothing much. Step one, step one, rank the products, rank the products, products based, based on their contribution to sales ratios, contribution to sales ratios so so you rank the products based on their contribution to sales ratios starting with the one with highest starting with the one uh, with highest highest c slash s so what is required when you are plotting a multi-product break-even chart what is then required is first to calculate contribution to sales ratio for each product for you to rank. So you calculate contribution to sales ratio and rank. That's what it means. That's step one. Step two. Step two. Based on, based on Contribution to sales ratio rankings based on contribution to sales ratio ranking, comma. Compute cumulative revenue and cumulative profit. Uh, prepare a table. We actually say prepare prepare a table. A table showing showing cumulative revenue cumulative revenue and cumulative you know cumulative means adding on to adding on meaning as you sell the first what is your revenue sell the second what is your total revenue for the first and second and then sell the third that's cumulative revenue you'll be doing the same with cumulative profit but it is important for for you to notice that uh, nb starting point is to assume that when nothing is sold cumulative revenue is zero and cumulative profit the starting point starting point is to assume that when nothing is sold when nothing is sold comma cumulative revenue cumulative Revenue, uh, cumulative revenue is zero and cumulative profit, cumulative profit equals equal to minus total fixed costs. Now, meaning what it means is if you don't sell anything, start with a profit which is equal to the loss of the total fixed costs you agree with me on this one if you don't sell anything your cumulative revenue is zero and your cumulative profit is minus total fixed costs you incur a loss which is equal to total fixed costs if you don't sell anything so this is your first point on this particular table that we are talking about then step number three. Step number three on a graph paper. On 
a graph paper. Though, in your exam, the graph paper will be provided. I mean, actually, the graph will be drawn. You will be asked to mark points on the graph. So you don't, you will not be able to mark points if you don't know how to draw it. No wonder why I tell you how to draw it, so that you'll be in a position to mark the points on the graph. So on a graph paper, comma, uh, what you do is, on a graph paper, you plot, plot a cumulative revenue on the horizontal axis, cumulative, Cumulative revenue, revenue on horizontal axis, horizontal, horizontal axis, and cumulative profit on vertical axis, vertical axis. So the starting point, the starting point being, starting point, starting point, you know, the starting point is zero as to sales, zero revenue, zero revenue as to minus total fixed cost. Because if you don't sell anything, your revenue is zero. And your your profit is minus total fixed cost. That's the starting point. So you 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 then have to plot these on a graph. So what do you do after plotting it on a graph, which is step number four? Step number four. Join the points. I will come. I will, I will show you the graph shortly. I will download it. Join the points with with straight lines. Join the points, meaning these points like cumulative revenue and cumulative profit, that point you you now join the points with straight lines. You join the points with straight lines. So what do you do after joining the points with straight lines? And then then Join the first and last point. Join the first, the first and last point. After doing this, we then say the point, the point, I, I said join the first and last points, and last points with a single straight line, with a single straight straight line for what purpose now the point that this last line last line crosses crosses x axis gives point in units in in, in break even point in dollars or break or or break even sales break even even sales so it's simple as that so let me show you uh, this last point is very important so here is the deal let me let me sh let me show you how a multi product break multi product break even point looks like multi 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 product break even point let me show you uh, let me open images here uh, okay uh, i'm sure this diagram this diagram is is connotations to what we are really talking about let me open it All right, so here is how your multi-product break-even point is like. It is like this. Uh, unfortunately, I can't zoom it, but I trust you are able to see it. Here is what it looks like. Notice, you first rank your products using 
what we call contribution to sales ratio. So in this case, there are quite a lot of products. There's product M and there's product N and there's product J. So there are three products, M, N, J. So for you to know how these products are plotted on this graph, they are pro plotted based on their contribution to sales ranking. So it means M is the highest, followed by N and lastly by J. That's what it means. So, so what, what you are doing is you are, you are plotting cumulative revenue, which is on the horizontal axis, and cumulative profit on the vertical axis. So the first point, as I have said, the first point is to assume that if nothing is sold, your revenue is zero here, yeah? and your profit is equals to minus fixed costs, which is K. If you don't sell anything, you incur a loss. But when you sell M, you are now migrating from a loss into a profit, but M is not able to cover all fixed costs. Then you sell B like this. You sell B like this. When you sell B like this, are you not seeing, I, I mean, when you sell N, are you not seeing that N allows you to cross this, at this point, which is marked B, you can see here that your profit is zero, cumulative profit is zero. When you sell B. Then, uh, I mean, at point B. Then at N, you again sell J. What you, you then do is you join the points, cumulative revenue and profit. Cum at N, cumulative revenue and profit here, you plot the points. And then you join these points with a single, with straight lines. Like this is a straight line, another straight line, another straight line. And on step number four, I then said, join the last and the first point with a single straight line like this. This is the last and the first point with a single straight line. And then I said, notice on, on step number four, I, I then said the point that this last line crosses the x-axis, the point that this last line uh, crosses the x-axis gives the break-even point in dollars. So you can, you can see here that when this last line crosses the x-axis here, that's where your break-even point is in sales revenue. So you will be asked this will be this will come and 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 you they will be they will tell you the product and they can they can say which product is represented by point M. So the product which is represented by point M, it is the product which is sold first meaning the product with the highest contribution to sales ratio, followed by product at point N second, and then at point J, the last product, which will be the product with the lowest contribution to sales ratio. Get it? So how, that's, that's how you, 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 you come up with a multi-product break-even break -even chart. So this is, uh, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm, be, I, I'm thinking of perhaps trying to uh, come to another diagram, if I can find one, to further illustrate it, but I'm sure I've already illustrated it, thinking of a diagram which I can zoom, if there's any, if there is any which I can zoom, and it appears, it appears the products in uh, the diagrams that I have in question are products, are diagrams, multi-product, multi-product break-even point. Let me see this, try to open another one. So clearly, clearly there are very few diagrams here which I can zoom so the diagram that i have already showed you it captures everything that i wanted to to show you on multi-product break-even chart so what we then have to do now is to do questions let us do questions the cvp analysis is done and you can see we have just spent an hour we have three hours 
and we need three topics. So it, it is well within reach if we can pay attention. So let us have illustrations. Illustrations. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to use illustrations from Kaplan Revision Kit, but uh, you can as well we can, we can as well use quite a lot of other illustrations from all the books at our disposal. So where is Kaplan Revision Kit? Here you are. I'm opening it. Mm -hmm. uh, Let me search the question that I want. Uh, two or seven, perhaps. Two or seven. Uh, okay, let me let me open the question, perhaps. Oh no, not not necessarily. Here yeah, events. Let me open the question and see our events and see how it goes. Okay. Right. This is question number. This is question number 214. Yeah, events. So I'm sure you're following through so that when I'm reading it, it will make sense. And you can see this is past exam, meaning your colleagues wrote it. Your colleagues wrote the question. So he's saying Hair Events is a company here. Hair Events is a company which specializes in organizing sporting events in major cities across Thailand. It has approached a local council of Edgelas, a large city in the north of Thailand, to request permission to host a running festival, which will include both full marathon and the half marathon. So uh, you can see here that the running festival has got two products. They have got full marathon and they have got half marathon. So there you go. And then based on the, on the prices, it charges for entry to similar events in other locations. Here events is decided on an entry fee of 55 for the full marathon and 30 for the half marathon. It expects that maximum entries will be 20,000 for the full marathon and 14,000 for the half marathon. So, if you don't mind, allow me to edit this to, 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 to perform some edits to the text. Let me edit text. Um, let me edit this particular text as on the go as I'm reading it so that you, you'll be able to follow. They are saying they're expecting that maximum entries to be 20,000 for the full marathon and 14,000 for the half marathon. So this means mixed ratio. That's what it means. Mixed ratio equals 20 to 14. That's what it means. Which is equals to you can you can shorten it you can you can shorten it as to 10 is to 7 so it's 10 full marathon full marathon as to 7 half marathon that's the mixed ratio and and when they say selling prices are 55 for the full marathon and 30 for half marathon these are now sp selling price equals 55 for full and 30 for half 55 for full marathon and 30 for half marathon so you 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 need to know the, we are getting all this as we are reading on the go the examiner does not necessarily tell you that this is a multi product break even chart the examiner puts it like that then we are also told that here yeah, events has done a full assessment of the likely costs involved in this marathon. And then 
Each runner we will receive. When they say each runner, it means variable cost. You need to, to know this yourself. When they say each runner, it means what they are talking about there is now variable cost. You know, variable cost means per unit. When you are talking of running of a marathon, unit is the runner. So each runner will receive a race pack on completion of the race, which will include a medal, t-shirt, water, and chocolate. Water stations will need to be available for every five kilometers, five kilometer point along the race route, stocked with sufficient supplies of water, sports drinks, and gels. These costs are considered to be variable as they depend on the number of race entries. So I already told that they are variable costs. So the examiner has proceeded to tell us. But even if the examiner is not told us, we, we have already picked it up there. Then here events will incur the following fixed costs. It will need to pay a fixed fee to the ageless council for permits, roads, closures, and support from the local police and medical services. A full risk assessment needs to be undertaken for insurance purposes. Marketing campaign will be, will be planned via advertising on running websites, in fitness magazines and other events. Year yeah, events is organizing in Tiland. The company which year yeah, events usually employs to do the race photography has been approached. Details of these costs are as follows. So these are fixed costs. So the others like council fees, risk assessment and insurance, marketing and photography, these are fixed costs. So what you what you then have to, to know is that on on suppose you want to calculate a, you want to calculate contribution on 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 full marathon. So on full marathon it means on full marathon, it then means fixed cost equals, let me change the color here, or variable cost equals, it's $15.80 plus $2.40. You get uh, 20, I don't have a calculator with me, you get 18,2. Variable cost equals 18,2 here. And then here, uh, what do you have as variable cost on this one? On 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 half marathon, uh, they are saying respects in water stations. So VC equals twelve. Right. On on race ma on on race or, or on on half marathon VC is twelve. And then we are also given total fixed costs here. So. We can now have total fixed costs on this question because all these other costs are fixed. So it's total fixed costs equals you now have 300 plus 50 plus 30 plus 5. That's 85. So it's 385. 385123. So we now have everything. Total fixed costs, selling prices. You may remember. Remember, on a half marathon, the selling price, on full marathon, the selling price was, the selling price is 55. Here, on a half marathon, the selling price, the selling price is 30. On, on, on a half marathon, the selling price is 30. I'm just bringing the figures closer so that you can see them. SP. 30 on half marathon. So you now have SP and on half marathon, SP on full marathon. So we now have everything. Now the question now is, so I am now escaping because I have edited my document. So everything is now in place. Now the question is, if the air event decides to host only the full marathon, what is the margin of safety? So if they say if the air event decides to host only, only the full marathon, this is now a single product break-even 
analysis. It's not a multi product because of the word only. The question here is saying if it was a single product, like it, if it was only half marathon, full marathon, what was going to be the break even? So it's 214,1. That's the air events. So the question is 214,1. Wasting only full marathon. Wasting only full marathon. In this case, it's a single product break. It's a single product analysis. Single product BEP. We are, we are, we are, we are just do dealing with one. Only means one. Only in the only full marathon year means one. So what you simply do is you say selling price. Price we have it is fifty five. For cost. If it is 18,2, 18,2 for the full marathon, so we have contribution per unit. A unit, that's for full marathon. Remember, contribution, you get it by saying selling price minus variable cost, so it's 36,8. And then we have got total fixed costs. Total fixed costs is 385. All these figures so we, we we then say break even point in units so break even point in units becomes in this case remember we say the total fixed costs divided by contribution per unit that's how we calculate break even point in units total fixed costs over break over uh, contribution per unit so this is the units of full marathon we need to break even. We need 10,461 if you are only concentrating on full marathon. Now, the question is, the question was saying, what is the margin of surface? And it is a percentage. So we need to proceed. We said MOS equals what? MOS in units. MOS in units. Because our break-even point is in units. So you calculate MOS in units. So it's, it's budgeted output less break-even point in units. And if you want to focus on full marathon alone, budgeted output is 22,000. I mean, it's 20,000. If you want to focus on full marathon alone, budgeted output will be 20,000. So you are now saying equals 20. One, two, three, minus break-even point, which is this. So margin of safety is 9,538. Then you say MOS percentage. MOS percentage. Now, if you, if you, if you now need MOS percentage, you are, you are simply saying this margin of safety over budgeted output, meaning equals... 9,000, this figure here, divided by budgeted output, 20, 1, 2, 3. And you give your answer as a percentage. And you may, you may, you may, for it's 47,7% or 48, whichever way you want to put it. You check if your answer is there, 48% is the answer to question number one. Yes, 47,7%. So the answer is B. That's your margin of surface. So it's so important to memorize the formula. Then we have 214, 214,2. 214,2. 214,2 Assuming that race entries are sold in a constant mix ratio based on the expected race entry numbers, what is the sales revenue year event need in order to achieve a break even? Now, sales revenue to achieve a break even. 
Now, they are saying, assuming that race entries are sold in constant mix, this is now multi-product break-even because we are now having full marathon and half marathon. So what we what what we then have to do in, in this case is you say full marathon. These are the two products we have, and we have got a half marathon. So uh, you say contribution per unit, contribution per unit, contribution per unit for full marathon. We have calculated it above. It's thirty six comma eight. For half marathon, remember for half marathon, the selling price is 8 and variable cost is 12. So you simply say contribution per unit equals 30 minus 12. So we now have contributions and then units. 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 So the units here, we had budgeted to sell 20,000. We had budgeted to sell 14,000 tickets. So you now have total contribution. Total contribution. Total contribution. Now that you have total contribution, uh, you multiply, you are multiplying this over. I mean, this multiply by 20. That's your that's your total contribution. It's seven thirty six, and there total contribution is two fifty two. So you now have the grand total. The grand total equals this plus this nine eighty eight. This is the grand total contribution. And then we say selling price. Selling price here we do have fifty five. And there is state. Then we now have revenue, total revenue, total sales. Total sales, you are saying units multiplied by selling price. That's how you get total sales. And then you add here equals this plus this. Now, we calculate break-even point in units. How do we calculate break-even point in units? Remember what we are, what we have. Oh, sorry. Did I say my? Oh, I said times. I wanted to say plus. It's one million and fifty. One million five hundred and twenty. And then we said you calculate what is called weighted contribution. The, what is called weighted contribution to sales ratio. And remember what we said, we said we calculate it as total contribution from all products over total sales. That's how we, we calculate weighted contribution to sales ratio. So in other words, this weighted contribution to sales ratio becomes equals this divided by this total contribution from all products divided by total sales. So weighted contribution equals a 0.65 total contribution to sales. And then we then said break even point in revenue. Break even point in sales revenue for multi products. Remember we said you say <clears throat> total fixed costs over weighted contribution to sales ratio total fixed costs divided by weighted contribution to sales ratio so your total fixed costs are 385 that's your total fixed cost you divide by this weighted contribution to sales ratio and you get your answer is 592 this is what they want this is the answer which they want what they are saying what is unit uh, what is the break even sales revenue revenue so you check whether we have got 592 amongst the answers they are saying to the nearest 1000 so it's 592 so the answer is c 
you we have <coughs> we have 592 there 307 if you put it to the nearest thousand it's five it's five ninety two thousand you get that then two one four comma three two one four comma three is saying yeah, events which is to achieve a minimum profit of 500,000. We call this target profit. Target profit. So it's like sales revenue required to achieve the target profit of 500. Then they're saying, what are the number of race entries? What number of entries, yeah, events, we have to sell for each race in order to achieve this level of target profit? Assuming a constant mix based on expected race entry numbers, work to the nearest wall number. What, what, in your opinion, what, do you, what are the number of entries which you expect here events to sell to achieve break even? So, I mean, to achieve a target profit. So, we, we still have, we still have, we still have to calculate way, uh, sales. Here they are saying number of entries, meaning units. When they say number of entries, these are units. They are not revenue. Number of entries, these are units to achieve a target profit. So all you have to do is to come to the notes. We said units or sales volume. We said what? Sales, sales volume to achieve a target profit. Remember, that's what we said. Sales volume to achieve a target profit. How do we calculate it? Sales volume to achieve a target profit. Remember, we said here, you say equals. You say total fixed costs plus target profit divided by weighted contribution per unit. Weighted contribution per unit not weighted contribution to sales ratio so we need to calculate weighted contribution per unit so you come here and say weighted contribution per unit equals so you have these products you have you have uh, let's say equals equals this we have full marathon and half marathon like this and then you've got contribution per unit. Contribution per unit. We have calculated the figures already. 36 and 18. 36 and 18. So there you go. These are contributions per unit that we have. And then we now have uh, sales mix ratio. Sales mix ratio. Sales mix ratio, remember it's 10 as to 7. It's, it, it was 20,000 as to 14,000, which is 10 as to 7. We reduced it to 10 as to 7. So what it means is, you can now say weighted. Weighted contribution per unit equals, you can now say open bracket, 10 over 14 times 36,8 plus 7 over 14 times 18. That's how you calculate weighted contribution per unit. And, and the answer that you get, Sorry, sir. yes. Okay. But 10 over 14, 10 over 17. Oh, it's 10 over 17. Oh, you, you guys are stars. I, I, I'm still remembering the 14,000, not knowing we have reduced it to 17. So it's 10 over 17. You are right. 10 over 17 times this. Okay, so over 17 like that. So we then have to, to multiply to say 10 over 17 times 36 plus 7 over 17 times 
18. This is now weighted contribution per unit. This is weighted contribution per unit. Know that the answer in yellow there is the weighted contribution per unit. Why are we calculating it? Because we need to calculate sales revenue to achieve a target profit. You calculate it as total fixed cost plus target profit divided by weighted contribution per unit. So we can now say total fixed costs, total fixed costs. Remember, we have them already as 385, 385, 1, 2, 3. Then target profit, target profit. We've got, they are saying they want to achieve a target profit of 500, 1, 2, 3. Then total fixed cost plus target profit. TFC plus target profit. You are, you are, you are adding these up. Then uh, sales volume to achieve this. You, 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 can now, you can now copy this again and bring it there. Sales volume to achieve this. Remember we said equals total fixed cost plus target profit. We said the formula is this. So what it what it means is it's it's then equals to eight eight five divided by twenty nine comma zero six. So this is the sales volume to achieve the target profit. The answer you are getting there is in units, meaning these are race entries that we have to sell in order to achieve a target profit. But after calculating the rest entries, we then have to break them down. I will remember our NB. If I come to the NB, we said for multi products, the units are then apportioned to products using budgeted sales mix ratios. If I, if I bring it here, it, it then makes sense because the question here it requires how many full marathon and how many half marathons. So you then say mix ratio, you then say full marathon, full marathon, you then say 10 over 17 multiply by 30, 455, comma, 47, like that. Then half marathon, you then say 7 over 17 multiply by 30, 455.47. Close this, and then you, you have your answers, because 10 over 17 times this, you have that, here you say equals 7 over 17 times this. Then, they are saying, give your, give your answers to, to the nearest, one number, so meaning reduce them to the nearest one number. So it will be 17, 9, 15, and 12, 5, 40. These are the rest entries that we have to sell in order to achieve a target profit of 500,000. So if the answer was, well, how many entries, if, if, he, if the question did it want you to say half marathon so much, ah, so the answer is A, full marathon, 17, 9, 15, and half marathon, 12, 5, 40. So if the answer is just, if the question is just said, how many race entries you have to sell to achieve a profit without saying how many of which product? The answer was 30, 4, 5, 5. But because the question wanted us to break it further into units of each product that we have to sell. Now, suppose they, they said, how much revenue do you have to make in order to achieve a target profit? You, 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 you then say weighted contribution to sales ratio. The answer you get, it will be in sales. And you break the sales in their budgeted mix ratios. Simple as that. So you, you need to understand you need especially especially the assumptions which underpin break-even analysis in general. The assumptions which underpin break-even analysis in general. Uh, assumptions for involved in break-even analysis.
break-even analysis. You know, I have told you for multiple products that products are assumed to be sold in their constant sales mix ratio. I told you that, and you understand that, and the sales mix ratio is not expected to change. But in general, these are some of the assumptions, like fixed costs are expected to remain fixed. Fixed costs are expected to remain unchanged unchanged. This is a very important assumption involved in, in BEP, in break-even analysis. The other assumption is selling price, selling price, and v variable cost per unit are expected to be constant. Per unit are expected to be constant. This is so important. Another assumption is is output produced is assumed to be sold. Output output produced is assumed to be, to be entirely sold. sold with no provision no provision for opening inventories, for opening or closing stock, closing inventory. So we ex we don't expect that we have got inventory. No wonder why the, the graphs I was showing you here, they started zero, meaning opening inventory is a zero, remember. Even if you go for the multi-product again, it starts from zero here, meaning Everything that is produced is assumed to be sold. Now, continue. All right. Now, here events is also considering introducing a 10-kilometer race during the, the running festival. It expects the race will have entry fee of $20, $20 per competitor, variable cost of $8 per competitor, and fix the cost as of with associated with this race is 48,000. Now, they are saying if the selling price per competitor, the variable cost per competitor, and the total fixed cost for this 10 kilometer race all increase by 10%, what, what will happen to the break even volume and break even revenue? So this one, oh, the answers are already marked. That break-even revenue will not change, will change, but break-even volume will not. But let us prove that. This is about, this information is about 10 kilometer race. So it's 214,4. Are you not seeing, I am so particular with what I do. I, and, and you can see that I'm very neat. On that one, on that, this, this, no wonder why we call this, management accounting. In an exam, we don't really tell you, you figure out the presentation yourself. All you have to know is, this is what you intend to achieve. So armed with that information, you figure out the presentation yourself. Okay, so this is about 10 kilometers. So the 10 kilometer race is like this. Uh, we do have current position. Current, this is current. And then after 10% increase. After 10% increase. We want to see how this thing goes. Currently, as it stands, and after the 10% increase. So let us let, let let we are told here that selling price selling price for the 10 kilo, kilometer race is $20. So you put 20 here. And after the 10 and then we are give, given that variable costs for the 10 kilometer race current is $8 per competitor. So I come here and I put 8 Notice, I, I, I'm not lazy.
to say, ah, this I can figure it without working. No. Contribution. Contribution per unit. I have it as equals this minus this. And then total fixed costs TFC. I'm told it's 48,000. This is the information I have per competitor. So I can now say contribution to sales ratio, contribution to sales ratio, which is contribution over sales. Here it's equals to contribution 12 divided by 20. Now, so I can, I can have break even point in units and break even point in sales volume. So I have BEP, BEP in units, a break even point in units. It's remember break even point in units. It's a matter of just saying total fixed costs divided by contribution per unit. This is break even point in units. And break even point in, in, in sales volume, BEP in sales volume. Uh, if you are calculating BEP in sales volume, you simply say total fixed costs here divided by contribution to sales ratio. 80,000. Now, let us see if we have increased the figures. So here, we can, we can copy the formula here. We can copy this formula. We want to see what will happen. So let us copy the formula and put the figures. They are saying if sales revenue variable cost ETC, they all increase by 10%, what is going to happen? So we are saying here equals this to increase by 10% is to multiply it by 1.1. That's to increase it by 10%. So you get that. And then break even point in units. You are now you are fixed the cost, you are equally doing the same. You are saying equals this. Multiply by 1,1. Okay, so there, there you go. So the examiner wants 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 you to tell him or her what happens to break even point in units and break even point in sales volume so break even point in units you can see it remains unchanged but break even point in sales volume changes so this is a tick question so it's a matter of ticking break even point in sales volume unchanged break even point in 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 in, in, in dollars changes so we have proven that. Now, can you give me the answer to question number five? That will be the last, so that we move on to the sum to something else. All right, I'm waiting for you to tell me the answer to question number five. Do I have people there? Where are you there? Um, yes, I'm there, sir. I'm still trying to read them. Okay.
All right. Let me see. Let me see the the answer here. All right. C. Okay, Temani is saying C. Let me check. Okay, Temani, I'll come back to you. He's saying one and two. Let let us read one together. Production and sales revenues are assumed to be the same, and there is no inventory movement. Correct. One is correct. Contribution to sales ratio can be used to indicate the relative profitability of different products. Correct. Two is correct. CVP analysis assumes that fixed costs will change. No. Nope. Three is out. Selling prices are recognized to vary. No. Nope. Four is out. So you are correct, Teman. The answer is C. Okay. So there you go. I, 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 you know, as I have said, with this this particular lecture is 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 loaded. There are quite a lot of uh, uh, of aspects here in this particular lecture. So what what we want what we want is to have for this lecture to have its own video, so that we also have another video for the other discussion item. This is important to avoid a situation where if you are playing it, you get tired and then you, you play the other video in a tired in a, in a, in a tiresome mode and you may not understand it. So what I'm going to do now is to stop recording this lecture and start recording on the new lecture again, which is on when you, when you after playing this, you then have to move on to relevant costing. You know, we are discussing quite a lot relevant costing and limiting factors that's 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 for 